Welcome to the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. My recent video introducing the Agile Friction Hitch showed you in 28 minutes of detail everything I know about this new friction hitch I devised, which is effectively a variation of the Clem Heist, except that performance is better in multiple dimensions and it allows us to incorporate a carabiner to act as a handle which like some of my other designs really facilitates ascent for a rope climber. I will be tying today with just one combination this is seven millimeter cord on 9.5 millimeter rope that is a 74 percent ratio and this is just a great match of rope and cord. The length specification, this happens to be 6 feet or 72 inches or 183 centimeters that I've used to form each of these. If you change your diameter of rope and cord, you might need more, you might need less. You can always refer to the jrbtreeclimbing.com uh, length specifications page for any details on my designs. So I've got these fashioned here with a, a load carabiner exactly as I would for a JRB stationary rope climbing system. One is designed for use with my right hand. I call that the right-handed variant and this is the left-handed variant. And I, I place my hands here on the carabiners and basically when load is on my feet, I shove these up. Okay, I'm going to remove the load carabiner and get started. And as I do so, just a note about carabiners. These are not large carabiners. They're, they're small carabiners. They are locking. This happens to be a screw gate. This is an auto locker. I like small carabiners for this as long as they grab the rope. Here's one of my favorite carabiners for the Munzer friction hitch. Here's a tiny little carabiner that can't even be used for climbing. It's an accessory carabiner that fits inside of the larger one. But this works great as a handle. Please see the carabiners page on my website for any product picks for any type of carabiner, including the ones that you see here today. I'm going to be starting with the one on my left. I'm going to remove the carabiner, and as the name implies, it's agile. It goes on easily, and it comes off easily. I'm going to start by showing you how to tie this bend. This is the flat overhand bend. I don't have a dedicated video on it because it's so simple. It is, it is simply an overhand knot capturing both strands. But it is important that when you tie this, you don't have any unintended twists and turns. We don't want any unintended overlap. So I'll take a sizable working double end. and fashion a simple overhand knot. And I intentionally got that one twisted, right? It's, it's got some uninten unintentional twists. This has to be symmetrical. It has to be as compact as it can be. And we don't have to retie it. We just have to inspect it. Just have to inspect it and twist those out. So it's just as neat as it possibly can be. And when we're set, we pull all four ends individually, as hard as we can. And I'll still be able to untie that with just my finger strength. I'm now going to start the one on the left. And I start from left to right, I'm building a left-handed descender. I start from left to right. This is called the Z or right-handed chirality, but I start from left to right. So I'm going to be making four upward wraps. The exact number of wraps that you need to make on a given rope and cord combination can vary. For this combination, and I have done extensive testing on this rope and this cord, including wet testing, and this is a, this is a great combination. Three is never enough. Four is generally enough. And there are some uh, combinations where I need five. OK, so four wraps. One, two, three, four. I went around the back four times. I then drape the working bite down in front of the standing bite. I bring it around the back. And then I widen with my finger enough room to get the working, the 
standing bite and put it through the working bite. Make sure I don't have any extra twists there. And that's the hitch. That's the hitch. But I always recommend that it is used with a handle. Yes, it holds without one. But the handle is not only going to make it easier to climb, the handle also serves as a spacer and a non-jamming device. It helps to keep it from jamming. Now, where do I insert the carabiner? I insert the carabiner right here. I'm going to take a nail and I'm going to poke it through from front to back. I'm going to bisect both of these bites. So I've got the bite which terminates in the flat overhand bend and I've got the load bite. I'm going to jam this right through there. So it's going through this bite and it's going through that bite. That's the location that my carabiner will occupy. It's just that I'm going to bring it in from back to front. And I'm going to, I'm going to grab both the rope and that spot. And once it's there, I'm good to go. I could load this immediately and begin to climb. Okay, let's disassemble the one on the right and repeat. Easy to take on, easy to take off. And that's really handy because if we rig this through a tree crotch and you just happen to be working with a tree crotch that is particularly tight and we can't get this through, no problem. Just take it back down, pop it off, put, pop it back on. All right, the one on the right, I'm going to build everything exactly the same, just in the opposite chirality. So I'll be operating from right to left. And it's a little harder for me to stay out of your out of your vantage point and that you're over my right shoulder but I'll do my best that's two times that's three times that's four times that we went around the back I can pause there and count and if I need to spin see I can spin this whole assembly to get more slack in and out I don't really pay too much attention to the exact size of my working end when I get started and I'll simply place this down and around the back and then take the standing bite pass it through the working bite and let's look at how that flat overhand bend is is uh, basically loaded the strands just pass through it. it it takes a little bit of load from the carabiner handle as well but it's, it's a minor, minor load. So I'm going to take that carabiner, I'm going to go around the back, and without the nail this time, I'm just, you can see where it's popping through. It's popping through and bisecting both of the bites. Let's zoom back out. And let's see how that would load. Here's my load carabiner. Of course these can be used individually, but this isn't my preference for SRT. There's other options for SRT. For example, the Longhorn Agile Hitch, which should not be confused with the Agile. This is the Agile Hitch. The Longhorn Agile Hitch is a different hitch. See the separate videos on that. Now I've got this loaded here, just out of your field of view, and I just simulating a load uh, climbing condition I would have stepped up on my foot loop and then I can simply shove these up I don't have any tension there but you get the idea alright so that's the basic thing the last thing I need to show you is if if you wanted to tie one without the flat overhand bend you didn't trust that bend you wanted something else well here's the same hitch but I fashion it with a hunter's bend and in the bottom loop and it's constructed in the same fashion now you could put the bend in first or you could put it in last I'll just do it as quick as I can I'll just demonstrate how to do it with the bend already formed see my separate video on the hunter's bend my favorite bend I'll take uh, I don't want the bend receiving load right there so I'll take it offset just a little bit okay so that I'll move that to the left because that's going to be my uh, load side and now I will simply repeat what you saw above from left to right four upward wraps in the Z chirality one two three four trips it went around the back four times I can count my strands to make sure one two three four I bring it down across the front 
spinning in any extra slack I may need. Go around the back. And now I just have to fit a little bit more through there this time. I've got to get my bend through there. But it's okay. We can fit it and then we'll dress that out. At this point, I always make sure that they don't have any extra, I'm not, I don't have anything spun around. I remove any unintentional overlap. And this time I'll take that tiny carabiner and insert it through. So I'm gonna go around the back, bisect both ropes both cords and there you have it. Let's do a quick inspection of the hitch. This is how I tied it and this is the vantage point I typically have when I climb. If I'm looking for my left-handed ascender and I'm seeing this, I spin it around until I have it in position. But if you wanted to inspect the back side to make sure that yours is tied properly, this is what it looks like. A note about these tails. I like to have long tails in my hitches. These are slightly longer than I need in this case because the flat overhand bend is got a reputation for being not as strong as other bends. And if it were to ever give, it would basically start to walk out and consume these ends. And by having long ends, it also makes it easier every time we climb, just to make sure, just a quick tug, make sure that that is snug. We have the option, as you saw in the introductory video, of making these even longer and putting a second overhand stopper here. However, in my testing recently, I have done extensive amount of testing and I do not find that necessary. As long as we form this properly and we check on it, it has never budged and I feel comfortable climbing with this without a backup. I will allow you to make that decision for yourself. Okay, there you go. There's the Agile Hitch, the left-handed and the right-handed variant, exactly as I tie them in a JRB stationary doubled rope climbing system. Thank you as always. Tie and try safely.